So the most common version of disc brakes is you just got the rotor, a caliper mount, and the caliper itself. There's two slides right here that hold the actual caliper to the caliper mount. And the caliper mount will also have to be removed to get the rotor off to change that out. Um, whenever you're doing your disc brakes, it's recommended to either get the rotor turned or if it's got too much run out, uh, replace the rotor. So, we're going to remove the caliper right now. This particular car has a 13 millimeter bolt to remove the slide. And sometimes they will come out like this, other times they will spin. If they do spin, put the appropriate size wrench on the slide. This one's got two notches <clears throat> in it, and you just remove that bolt. So it's somewhere where you're not going to lose it. Now we're going to get that upper one. And these are coming out. Oh, and as you see, the slide is starting to turn. I'll show you that move right here. See how the nut head moves? So. Get the wrench on there and remove the bolt. So now we have to physically take the caliper off, and it's been on there a while. It's pressed down. It's been on there a while, so right now we're gonna. Right off with a small pry bar. And then just nicely set the caliper off to the side. Now you have your brake pads right here, which you could relatively go into a pad slab. He's got a little bit of bite left to him. The other side was gone. <clears throat> but the proper way to do this is to actually clean these pieces up and loop your caliper slides. And turn the rotor, which is now loose. So we're going to go ahead and remove the caliper mounting bracket. So as you see, the mounting bracket has two 13 millimeter bolts into it to hold the mount bracket on. We're going to remove it right now and these usually are on with quite a bit of force so I'm using an impact but a regular regular um, ratchet will work. That's why air tools are nice. So after you remove bolts just remove your caliper mount and your rotor. Slide right off. So now, if you've removed your rotor, you notice there's some rust on the back side and the front side. Front side of it. If you take the rotor off, you should always get rid of this corrosion to make sure that your rotor seat unevenly. Now, I just did that to show you kind of an example of how clean you should be getting it. You see it's all nice and shiny silver. You know. There is... There's the bearing. But, again, just examples. Don't want to put too much into the video. So, I'm actually replacing this bearing and the rotor but bearing will be in another video so magically by editing it's going to be clean brand new bearing now we're going to put our new rotor on I like
like to cinch it up with one sword nut. So that way your rotor is just secure. Now we're going to take our nice new caliper mount and new parts and lube slides. Put it into place. Bolts back in. Ah. Oh. Now your rotor and caliper mount are back in. What we gotta do is put our new pads in. Figure out which one's your inner and outer. Slide your new pads into the caliper mount. So there. There's your new pads. And you put it back into the slides. And now your brakes are successfully installed. Okay, before you ever put that car in gear, you want to go on your test drive. Before you ever do it, make sure you pump your brakes first because you did pull the caliper away from the brakes. There's no pressure, so you got to do this a few times. Make sure you have braking pressure. If you put it in gear, say reverse, you're backing out of your garage, and you don't have it, you won't have brakes when you back up. So make sure you always pump your brakes at the end of a brake job and then do your test drive. Thanks for watching Joe the Auto Guy. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. You also check me out on Facebook, my email is down below, and I'm on Twitter now too. Thanks for watching, hope this helped you. Have a great day.